Welcome everyone to episode two of the uh, Corner Post. I uh, recorded this yesterday on a Friday afternoon, but uh, Windows 10 somehow lost the file. So I uh, logged on last night, tried to upload it to SoundCloud and YouTube and whatnot, and um, the file could not be found. So that was a bit uh, a bit distressing, but I've decided just to um, just to record uh, again Saturday morning and then hopefully have this up by about midday or so. So. Uh, it'll be, um, you know, 25 or so minutes, probably, uh, if not a little bit shorter, you know, I'll get to cut out the crap that was in yesterday's podcast, um, the lost, <laughs> the lost podcast. So, um, yeah, it might be a bit shorter, a bit more straight to the point and, um, we won't be, you know, beating around the bush too much. Um, we'll just jump straight in with last week's game. So it was starting off, sorry, with a Friday night game. First time in, um, uh, in a while, I think, I think it was about 20 years or so, um, Manchester United defeating Aston Villa at Villa Park 1-0. Yanazai uh, returning to the first 11 with a goal in the 29th minute. Uh, just backtracking a little bit to the Friday night games, apparently there's going to be about seven or eight more um, coming up this season with the uh, new television deal. So, And then also in Aston Villa, apparently there was a um, political protest that the police had to attend to on the Saturday. So that just worked out for them having to play on the Friday. Otherwise, um, you know how... Um, the religious, <clears throat> the uh, Premier League fans are. I know I witnessed that firsthand, um, even when they were just playing in Australia. So, um, yeah, 1 0 to United. It's good to see Yanazai back on the score sheet. I think um, two seasons ago under Moyes, he was a um, he was a pretty good player. You know, he was banging in goals here and there. And, uh, you know, while he wasn't, he isn't a Di Maria like, he isn't a Memphis to pay, but he's a. Um, He'd be a good rotation player, you know, they can use him throughout uh, Capital One Cup, FA Cup kind of thing. Um, you know, the United have had a very short turnaround uh, coming back to play on the Friday night after playing on the Saturday. So, I mean, it's, it's six days, but just compared to other teams at least. Um, yeah, so Van Hal's rotated his team. They also played midweek against Club Bruges. Sorry, I keep getting that stuffed up. Um, so, like I said, he had to um, rotate his players, otherwise they'd get completely burnt out. So, uh, yeah, Yanazai last year with Van Hal didn't um, fit in too well with him. Van Hal wasn't too keen to use him. I think he he was perceived to be very weak on the ball. And um, and while he was um, he was a good player, in my eyes at least, the, his productivity... Um, what wasn't there i think you know he wasn't scoring he wasn't getting the assists he just seemed to be a space filler and for van hull you know just how ruthless he is um with um <coughs> with his um players sorry excuse me um yeah you just know that it's um yeah not the space for him but now that he's back in the squad sorry it's uh, good to see him there, and hopefully he'll maintain his place. It means a bit of competition with United still going to be signing a few players all over the shop. So uh, you never know who's going to come in, but hopefully Yanazai can hold his place. And moving on, uh, looking at Southampton and Everton, the one game I did watch, I didn't get around to seeing United and uh, Villa, excuse me. Um, so Everton, 3 new winners over Southampton at St. Mary's Stadium. Uh, Lukaku scoring a brace in the first half before Ross Barkley put them ahead 3-0 late. So um, this game was... Uh, the early stages were dominated by by Southampton. I think, you know, they were definitely out on the break and, um, you know, having shots on target definitely had their chances. But a um, counter-attack from Lukaku in the 22nd minute... Sorry, counter-attack from Everton, which was finished by Lukaku in the... <clears throat> in the 22nd minute. So, excuse, my voice is slowly going... Um, in the 22nd minute counter-attack, uh, Sadio Mane had a shot on goal against Tim Howard. Um, so they put it wide, and then, you know, Southampton took the corner, and then 17 seconds later, Lukaku put the ball in back of Southampton's net. So um, it's really uh, really frustrating for Southampton fans, I can imagine, uh, just losing that backbone uh, with, you know, Schneiderlin there, and obviously losing Klein as well at right back. Um, they're just really missing that structure that they had uh, through the middle. So... Everton just broke straight down the middle through there. Um, went out there, played it wide, and then Aruna Kone playing the ball into the middle uh, for Lukaku. He did really well to um, uh, finish off the uh, header. He had to control his body uh, in a really <laughs> odd manner. So he did his, did his best to put it well just under the bar. And um, Yeah, so that was 1-0. The second goal, fairly similar. Lukaku won it in the midfield and then dribbled it through, put it to Ross Barkley, who then slipped him through, and he just finished it off... Um, putting it past uh, Stecklenburg. So, I mean, um, I think, like I said earlier, just Southampton missing those big defensive units uh, through the middle. 
uh, that Schneiderlin provided last year. And uh, Wenyam is still there, obviously, but uh, it's not quite the same uh, for um, yeah for Southampton. So cause of concern. Uh, finally, Ross Barkley, 84th minute, um, took the ball well, cr cut back inside, and then put it, uh, finished it into the right hand side of the goal from uh, with his right foot. Uh, one of the more interesting plays to watch, I think, once he has his confidence, he's um, playing pretty well. But if he's down on confidence like he was was last season, then um, it's a bit hard to watch. I think Everton, most of the Everton team last season was um, <clears throat> was you know lacking that confidence. They did have a very bad run to finish the game and. Uh, sorry, very bad run to finish the season. Uh, so you can imagine how, how bad they were feeling and the morale was down within the team. So now that's a new season, I think, you know, they um, the 2-2 draw with Watford last last week wasn't the best result for them, but I think a 3-0 win away to Southampton uh, was a pretty good pickup for them. So, um, yeah, I think Southampton just, this might be the season where they, um, they finally fall out of the um, top half of the table. You know, they had some really good seasons last year and the year before and, uh, they just seem to be continuously losing players. That's the only problem. I mean, last year they survived after losing um, Lalana and Lambert uh, to Liverpool. But I think this year will be the year where they just don't have enough quality players to actually continue on. So, um, you know, I'd hate to see them get, re get relegated. You know, you want to see them stay in the top flight. But uh, I don't think they'll be maintain sorry, maintaining their uh, top half of the table status for much longer. Uh, moving on, Norwich uh, 3-1 over Sunderland at the Stadium of Light. Uh, they said this will be the first win for Norwich in the Premier League. Um, uh, yeah, once they've come back up. So, uh, it was a 3-0 th throughout the whole game. I didn't get to watch this, so just going off the statistics. But 3-0 the whole game, and then Duncan Watmore, Watmore sorry, in the 88th minute for Sunderland, uh, getting a, um, yeah, a just a late goal that really means nothing for them. So... Yeah, yeah, Norwich. Um, good to see them back in the Premier League. I think they've got a really good stadium. That playing at home, Carrow Road. Uh, you know, it's always good to see the yellow and gold out there. It's a very um very loud stadium, similar to Selhurst Park with um Crystal Palace, which I'll talk about later. Um, yeah, three one. I think Sunderland's almost destined for relegation. Uh, this year he's there. Um, sorry, really just um, you know, not enough plays in the team. Just no one's playing with all that confidence. There's all been. The controversy surrounded by Adam Johnson with his um, uh, underage, um, uh, I don't know, sexual activity with people. Um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, been been an abysmal last season. They were lucky to survive last year, actually. Um, but yeah, I think this is the season that they go down. So, you know, the year before last, they um, had the great escape. They beat Chelsea, had a magical run of games to stay in the top flight. But uh, this year is really, I think it's just about got to be over. So... 3-1 uh, to Norwich and Sunderland still um, off to a poor start to the season. So uh, moving right along, Swansea Newcastle at the uh, Liberty Stadium in Wales. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, uh, Gomis and Andre Ayew putting the um, Swans ahead over Newcastle. So Gomis, two goals to start the season. I think he'll be um, he'll be a regular on the score sheet um, over the course of the year. And Andre Ayew, the new boy coming from Marseille, um, pretty sure it was Marseille actually, double check that. Um, getting on the score sheet in the 52nd minute. So his brother, um, pretty sure it's Jordan AU, playing for Aston Villa. So um, good to see another two Frenchmen in the league. Um, yeah, Swansea in for a good year. Newcastle having um, spent the second most money in the uh, Premier League over the offseason. So um, you would expect them to do a lot better. I mean, the Liberty Stadium is a hard place to go to. Um, and especially the Swansea crowds, very passionate about their football. And uh, the Swans at home play a very hard style. But... Yeah, Newcastle, considering how much money they spend, you expect a lot better from them. At least get on the score sheet for it. But um, <clears throat> you know they've um, you know they've got they've signed a lot of players. But the thing is, they've signed a lot of players who I've never heard of. Um, you know they've got UOZ and all these other guys um, that they did bring in. I think United spent about three hundred million, and Newcastle they're about one twenty. So um, yeah, you do expect a lot better from them. I think they'll finish. You know, uh, middle of the second the bottom half of the table you know about 12th or so but um yeah swan's in for a good year i think they'll be looking to push for europa league but um yeah we'll have to see how southampton go if they can turn their season around and i think uh stoke are looking good to um uh, make it up there so speaking of stoke they had a 2-2 uh, draw with Tot uh, Tottenham, sorry, coming back from 2-0 down to equalise. I think Tottenham would be a bit disappointed with their start to the season. You know, the 1-0 loss to uh, 
uh, Manchester United coming off the own goal, even though, quite frankly, they dominated the game themselves and, um, you know, really should have won this game. You know, White Hart Lane, you expect, uh, you expect them to be winning most of their home games, uh, especially with the renovations coming, I think it's next year as well. So um, Stoke coming back late, a 78th minute penalty to uh, Marco Anatovic and then Diouf in the 83rd minute um, equalizing. So... Uh, really disappointing, obviously, for Tottenham. Not that I you know, sympathise all that much with them as an Arsenal fan, but uh, you'd have to feel for them and their fans having, you know, 2 0 up this year. No, sorry, this week, and then coming back to lose to to draw 2 2, and then last week at the 1 0 loss. Um, you can tell they're playing a decent brand of football. Um, they're very entertaining to watch. You know, Harry Kane's um, still, um, I still think he's overrated, but, you know, he's still a good striker as it is. Um, Eric Dyer, who's um, stepped up this this year you know had a good week last week defensively covering and then uh this week getting on the score sheet in the 19th minute so um you know you were hoping for a good season but if results like this keep disappointing i mean that's um what three points lost this week two points lost this um uh, sorry two points this week three points last week um you know that's five points gone that could be the difference between europa league and champions league in the end so um you know really hoping for um a better season but i think looking at stoke they've got um, some really good signings and as i mentioned last week they have the most um champions league players in their squad uh in the whole premier league which is incredibly surprising so you know you have afala you've got zodan shakiri coming in uh who um uh, couldn't play this game so he had to be pushed back a bit um pushed back to next week sorry um and just yeah i think stoke will have, should be in a good face in for a good season last year they had their highest finish in the premier league um in the recent, in the modern era, sorry, and they also had scored their highest points total uh, in the Premier League era. So I mean, they are definitely improving. You know, going away uh, to the Britannia Stadium is probably one of the hardest away trips, um, hardest away trips for uh, any team to go to. Um, so yeah, I think they'll be in for both teams in for a um, exciting season. But if results keep going like this, then I mean. Uh, they're going to have to improve if they want to push for Europa League or even Champions League honours. Uh, Watford, West Brom, uh, nil or draw. Um, I, <laughs> I don't think I even want to talk about this game. You know, nil or draw is probably the most uh, boring result in football imaginable. So I think we'll just pass right on to Leicester City and West Ham at Boiling Ground. Um, Leicester coming away with a um, 2-1 win over the Hammers. Um, so uh, Riyad Mahrez, who's open the score in the 38th minute that's three goals in two games so far for him um sorry excuse me uh shinji ozagaki <laughs> okazaki got there eventually in the 27th minute opening scoring riyad mara is continuing in the 38th um to put them up 2-0 before dimitri pay the new signing uh for west ham uh pulling one back in the 55th minute but um, I think it wasn't enough for West Ham. So 2-1 to Leicester City. They had a great start to the season. But that being said, it's been against two uh, mediocre teams. They beat uh, last week, going back, where are they? 4-2 uh, win over Sunderland. I think, you know, uh, they should be beating Sunderland without conceding two goals. And then, um, sorry, the first week was Sunderland. And then this week, West Ham. Uh, so, you know, two two relatively easy games to start the season. Uh, so, you know, it's um, good, that, good that they're off to a hot start, but, you know, don't be surprised if they do um, slip up a little bit here and there. You know, they had a, a um, great escape last season, you know, to finally get outside the relegation zone. Uh, they fired Nigel Pearson, brought in their new manager, um, Claudio Ranieri, just to have to double check that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think they'll be pushing for mid-table finish, but I think, you know, they'll be in a, about 11th or so. West Ham... Um, these new signings, you know, they had a um, more than promising start to the season last year, last week, sorry, with a 2-0 win over Arsenal. But um, I think that, <laughs> I'm hoping that it's a um, small blip on the radar and doesn't happen again, for Arsenal at least. But And as much as you'd like to see West Ham uh, continue to play, you know that in the end they're going to go back to the West Ham of old and not be able to score or put the ball in the back of the net. Um you're hoping with these new signings, you know, Payet Pay was instrumental last uh, last week against the Gunners, and um, Zorate getting on the score sheet would have been great for his confidence, but um, you just can't see them making a serious push for um, the top half of the table. Um, moving on to Arsenal and Crystal Palace. Arsenal with a 2-1 win against... 2-1 um, away win against Palace at Selhurst Park. 
Uh, so Giroud opened the scoring in the 16th minute after a well-placed cross from Mesut Ozil. He had a uh, overhead kick, which completely surprised me. I didn't think he'd actually uh, pull it off. But uh, yeah, put it past the goalkeeper. Um, and then in the 28th minute, uh, Joel Ward uh, equalizing for Palace, sorry, with a um, well-struck um, well cro- um, shot across the goals. He was um, just outside the box, laid it off uh, from Damien Delaney. And then... Uh, he um yeah hit it past Czech who really should have done better. I think it's the second week in a row that um he should be doing better on the um conceded goals. He um it was on the right hand side of the goal. Kashoni rushed out to him, but again uh didn't uh didn't contest the ball. Rather opted to stand still and cover one half of the goal. And in that case, then I think Czech should be uh, more aware of that. I don't know if it's a split second decision, but he should be aware that he needs to be on the right side of the goal while Kashoni's on the left blocking it. So um. Yeah, probably could have done better to get there. I mean, it was a well-struck shot into the bottom corner, went out and then drifted back in. And um, yeah, check should his positioning should really be a lot better for um, should really should be a lot better for a world-class goalkeeper with um, so much experience and so many um, titles under his belt. So um, yeah, it was good. Um, a great game from Mesut Ozil. Have to um, after a abysmal showing last week, he completed um, 98% of his passes. I think it was something like. 56 out of the 57 passes um yeah he um completed only one straight pass which is absolutely crazy for in the premier league era especially playing away um, at selhurst park which is um non-stop chanting you know you've got the lunatics sorry the fanatics is probably more politically correct uh the fanatics behind the stands going nuts singing the entire game and um you know they don't stop in for ozil to come out after last week's terrible showing to um play like that get the assist with Giroud. um and um, for sorry, another statistic for it. It was one th- one third of those passes were in the final uh, in the final third of the game. Uh, so in the attacking um, attacking third for Arsenal. Sorry, to put it a bit simpler. Um, so it was a good showing from him. You know, good to see uh, him kind of <laughs> turning around last week. Hopefully, he'll continue his form uh, into next week against Liverpool. So. Uh, another talking point of this game was uh, Francis Cochrane um, really should have been sent off even coming from a um, Arsenal perspective I think everyone knew that he should have been off the field and uh, at first it was he had a um, well the first yellow card really I think I'd have to disagree with it was um, well it was definitely a foul I wouldn't say it was worthy of a yellow card he um, made a tackle on I think it was um, Jordan Much um, and um, yeah took him down got the yellow card and um he got the ball, I would say, but then I think, actually, no, I think it was Balassi. Balassi stepped on his foot and then uh, fell over. So that was a straight yellow for him. I think it was his second foul of the game. So I think Coughlin's uh, getting, he's uh, building this reputation of being a uh, rough and tough player, uh, but he just needs to be careful he doesn't, you know, fall into the uh, penalty area where, um, sorry, the, um, where he's going to get penalized by getting five yellow cards and then, you know, missing that extra game. It could be uh, crucial for Arsenal. So uh, in the second half, he also had another um, another chance. He should have been, really should have been sent off for a um, professional foul on the Palace player. There was on the uh, fast break, you know, on the counter attack, and he um, pretty much didn't go for a ball, just shoved the player in the back, and everyone was calling for a red card. The crowd was going crazy. And after the game, Alan Pardew was just uh, furious, saying, you know, he really should have been off the field. Everyone knew it. I think even Arsenal knew it. So, um, you know, uh, well, Arsenal didn't know. I mean, Vengo acknowledged it straight away by subbing him off pretty much five minutes later. So, um, yeah, a bit of controversy in the game. But, uh, you know, that's how it finished, 2-1. I think it might have been a different result if they were... Um, if they, if Arsenal were a uh, player down, I mean, Crystal Palace had their chance after Arsenal went two one up. That um, Connor Wickham, the new boy from Sunderland, hit the hit the um, post. So, um, yeah, I think uh, might have been a different game, but I think that's just how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately, to put it um, bluntly. But um, yeah, leaving it there, and we'll move right on to uh, probably the game of the round with Manchester City coming away with a three 0 win over Chelsea um, at the. <laughs> Eddie had stadium. This was um incredibly surprising. Really did not expect this from uh, Chelsea. They um uh, watching the highlights seemed very lackluster, and 
uh Sergio Aguero in the 31st minute just breaking through the um defense and finishing it great um putting it past sorry <laughs> finishing greatly putting it past Azmir Begovic while Courtois is still serving his suspension uh although there was that first goal in the 31st minute before that uh, Aguero had a number of chances that were beaten out by Begovic had a, a great debut I must say um a great pr um, Premier League debut at least um, for Chelsea, you know, save some definite goals. It could have been six if it wasn't for him um, saving those goals in the, um, saving those shots rather, in the first um, opening uh, 20 minutes or so. So Aguero in the 31st minute, so 1 0 throughout the game. And then um, a bit of controversy on Chelsea's part with um, John Terry being substituted for the first time in uh, 177 games under Jose Mourinho at half time. So he was taken off and replaced by Kurt Zuma. And uh, when asked after a game, after the game, sorry, uh, Mourinho simply said that it was a tactical move. He wanted someone that was younger and faster than um, John Terry on the field. And funnily enough, the game ended at 3 0. So at half time, 1 0. And Zuma, or under his um, supervision rather, it was a um, another two goals conceded. So I think. Um, uh, Man City, uh, sorry, rather, uh, John Terry would be a bit sour about that. He played every minute of Chelsea's campaign last year where they won the title. So uh, for him to be taken off, I think it'll be a bit of a, um, you know, making a statement for Jose Mourinho saying that, you know, we'll do whatever it takes to win the title. But obviously it backfired in this occasion. Um, after the game, he said, you know, it was a fake win. But I think three goals kind of speaks, um, <laughs> kind of speaks to just how poorly Chelsea played, you know. Uh, company getting on the score sheet again. That's two goals in two games for him in the 79th minute. And then Fernandinho in the 85th minute just putting um, Chelsea to the sword. So, um, you know, a rather emphatic 3-0 uh, win for City. Um, six points ahead. Still haven't conceded a goal, I must say. So that's two clean sheets in a row. And Chelsea now five points behind the leaders. So, um, really, uh, uh, it's still early days. I mean, there's no real need for cause for concern. You know, Chelsea... Um, <clears throat> can always turn it around. I remember um, a few seasons ago, Arsenal starting off the season with a 3-1 loss to Aston Villa and then uh, went on to be on top of the table for something like 40 days um, across the Premier League. I mean, eventually you finished third, of course, which is you know typical Arsenal. But, um, you know, teams can have this poor start to the season and bounce back for it. You know, you'd rather lose these games now while uh, your players are a bit unfit and whatnot and then later on when it's a bit more crucial and um, you can't expect, obviously, Man City is going to drop points. Obviously, uh, Leicester is not going to stay top of the table um, for the season. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, Chelsea should, shouldn't be too worried about it. Um, you know, they'll bounce back from, I'm sure. And <clears throat> Hazard, despite having another invisible game, he'll um, come to life eventually. So, uh, yeah, a bit of controversy with John Terry. But I think, yeah, Man City, once again, you know, asserting themselves as uh, title favorites. Um, and just really taking it, picking apart Chelsea. So, uh, moving on to the last game of the round, Liverpool and Bournemouth. Um, this was at Anfield, and Benteke opening his account uh, for the Reds. I think it was pretty early in the game. Yeah, 26th minute. Um, I'm just opening up the link here. I did get to see the um, the second half of this game, and watching the replay of the goal, it um, should not have been um, should not have counted under the new Premier League rules. So. Uh, the rules stipulate that if a player in an offside position makes a play towards the um, towards the ball, and regardless of whether he makes contact or not, he'll be uh, deemed as offside. So, um, yeah, Benteke. Um, uh, it was a cross from Jordan Henderson, uh, the Liverpool new Liverpool captain, who actually went off injured in the 56th minute. Um, he uh, crossed it in. Coutinho made a play for the ball, but uh, actually didn't touch the ball. So, Arthur Burek, the Bournemouth goalkeeper. Um, made a um react naturally but um uh reacted towards the ball but didn't uh, actually you know have to save anything because Coutinho missed it uh and then Benteke the back post who came from an onside position uh finished it off so uh this was the first occasion that a new rule could have been uh pulled up and um you know made the correct call but uh the linesman failed to make the call you know the four referees present uh didn't make it and it was just um a bit disappointing to see the Premier League have its first test and then fail it so um, you know, it was really bad for Bournemouth, who had a um, actually had a goal disallowed after um, their centre back jumped over Lovren to score a goal. But um, uh, yeah, just one 0 to Liverpool. Really, not all that convincing. I think against a team like Bournemouth, they should be um, they really should be uh, winning those games. And then last week against Stoke City, I mean, like I said earlier, Stoke is a hard game to go away. But for a team like Liverpool, who are going to want Champions League. Um, qualification that's really um, 
they really should be doing much better against them. And then, yeah, last week a leg off from Continuo to save them. So, um, yeah, one nil to them. Uh, not like I said, not that not all that convincing, but. I think a win's a win for them, and when you're six points ahead of the table and still haven't conceded a goal, I mean, you can say the same. I said the same for Man City. I suppose you can't complain all that much um, when you're up the top in the uh, top four already. So, uh, moving on to next week's games, uh, starting off with Manchester United and Newcastle. Um, a um, it should be a United home win. There's been a bit of controversy surrounding uh, David de Gea. I'm actually not too sure whether he's going to be starting or not tonight. So, it's um. Go, it's uh still up in the air whether he's going to stay or go. I think I think he's probably going to stay. You know, Van Hal's going to um, you know, probably if anyone's seen Pop Fiction, you know, tie him up, put an apple in his mouth, and electrocute him, set uh, some um water torture or anything will do to keep him to stay. You know, so uh, Romero's been great for them, but um, you know, obviously David Dad David De Gea is a world class goalkeeper, and at such a young age, you know, he's going to develop into um an even better one, which is scary to think. So. Um, it should be a home win for United, a uh, 2-0 I would say, but uh, Rooney's been recently struggling. I think he's got one goal in his last 11 Premier League matches, uh, so look for him to try and get on the score sheet. I think uh, they'll be trying to feed him um, feed him the ball. The trouble is you've got Depay behind him, and um, if United are playing a 4-3-3, it really isn't ideal for them to be crossing the ball into Rooney, who's I think 5'8 or so, 5'9. He's not the tallest of players. And, you know, he's good at getting his head on the ball. But, I mean, when you're that tall against uh, centre-backs who are 6'4 and so, um, it's obviously very difficult. So, um, moving on, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa at Selhurst Park again. I think um, uh, Crystal Palace should take away this game. Maybe a 2-0 win, 1-0 win. Uh, you know, their, um, <clears throat> their stadium, as I mentioned earlier, the stadium's constantly chanting and the fans are right behind them. And they are playing a very good um, style of football, I must say. You know, it's entertaining to watch. Um, and, um, you know, Aston Villa, you know, the 1-0 win, win against um, Bournemouth in the opening week and then the 1-0 um, loss against United um, last week. I think it's, um, you know, it's a bit unfortunate for them, but I think Crystal Palace will be a bit too good for them uh, this week. Uh, Leicester City and Tottenham, I think it's uh, two, two teams coming from... Um, Two very different perspectives. Leicester City having a great start to the season, but um, you can't expect them to um, continue that run. And Tottenham having a very mediocre start to the season, but you expect them to get a lot better. So um, I think the teams will, at this point, <laughs> they might just level out and it might just come to a 1-0 um, win, away win for Tottenham. They're, um, you know, they've uh, finally got their players coming back. They are uh, in the first week. I know they had a very broken um, preseason. You know, they had a, had a game against, I think it was Barcelona, um, uh, just a few days before and then had to rotate their players. You know, Lamella was on the bench. They had to continuously move players around. They started Bentalab, who came to Australia as part of the preseason tour, if that says anything to you. Um, so, yeah, I think this will be a one-year win for Tottenham. I think they're just too good for Leicester City, who, um, like I said earlier, had two very easy games to start the season off. Um, and, yeah, um, moving on to Norwich and Stoke City, uh, Carrow Road. Um, I think this will be a, another 1-1 one, one, one draw uh, for Norwich. I think Stoke City just, um, you know, they do have the players there to, that are, you know, good enough to get the win. But, um, you know, Norwich after last week, you know, it was a 3-1 th against Sunderland. I mean, it is Sunderland, but, um, you know, they, um, for them, they still have to score the goals. It isn't like Sunderland are rolling over and, you know, just letting them bang it in. They still have to put the ball in the back of the net. So uh, I'd say a one all draw for that one. And speaking of Sunderland, Subway, uh, Swanderland and Swansea at the Stadium of Light. Um, I think Swansea will take this 3-0, unfortunately, unless Sunderland pull a cat out of the bag. Um, it'll just be really, um, <clears throat> uh, it'll be, um, you yeah, know, that it'll be a miracle for them to turn around this season. I think I, I've already condemned them to relegation, which you'll hear over the next 38 weeks, unfortunately. So, um, if anything, I'll probably get a Sunderland swear jar every time I say Sunderland and relegation within the uh, same five-minute segment. I'll um, put two dollars in and see how much money I have at the end. So uh, we'll leave that there. Like I said, Swansea two-nil win at the Stadium of Light, and um, West Ham and Bournemouth at Boiling Ground. Um, honestly, I'd like to see Bournemouth get get the win here and actually score. You know, they had a goal disallowed last week, but um, I think West Ham they. Um, just too many, uh, too many good players to lose to a team like Bournemouth. Um, uh, you know, Payet playing really well. You know, Zarate, um, he'll want to get back onto the score sheet after an abysmal season last year. 
um, you know, I think Bournemouth, they are playing good style of football and and it's very um, fast-paced and entertaining to watch. But every time they get the ball, you can tell that they want to attack. They want to go get the goal. They want to go um, uh, put the ball away. But sometimes in the Premier League, you just have to slow down and take your time and um, uh, just you know, uh, take it, yeah, move the ball and just be patient with it. Cause if you try to attack on every, every possession, then a team will hit you on the counter. And, um, I think with a pacey striker like Zarate up front and a player like pay at, uh, running the midfield, then, uh, West Ham will can capitalize on that. So, um, I think, yeah, two new win for West Ham. Look for pay to again, get on the score sheet. Um, and it'd be good to see Reese Oxford. If he does play again, uh, he got substituted off at half time against United. Um, if he does play again, it'd be good to see him score, you know, a 16 year old, um, seeing that sort of thing hasn't happened since, um, I think it was about Fabregas era, or, I mean, um, I think Jack Grealish would be the uh, most recent one, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, Fabregas coming on as 16-year-old, then, um, yeah, you'd like to see the same thing for Reese Oxford, so, uh, moving on, West Bromwich Albion and Chelsea, I think Chelsea will bounce back in this game, maybe, <laughs> I want, after losing 3-0 to, um, uh, Man City last week, uh, sorry, the week before, um, I think West, West Brom will come out much more defensive. Tony Poulos came out and said that he started the game, um, he started the game far too, far too offensively minded, you know, starting a 4-4-2 with two strikers, Ricky Lambert up top, and then after the conceding the early goal to Yaya Toure, um, you know, he moved it to a 4-5-1, just leaving Lambert up top and then dropping back in, um, Sadio Barinho, um, so I think Chelsea were looking to bounce back. Look for Hazard to have a come out and have a great game. You know, after Mourinho praised him to be uh, better than uh, better than uh, Ronaldo, he'll be um, looking to actually prove that point. You know, you can't have your manager come out and say that, then you know, and then completely flop. So um, yeah, Chelsea, I'd say four or five nil. You know, look for them to come out and absolutely pounce on um, a weak West Brom team. So moving on Everton and Man City at Goodison Park um Everton's been um their social media has been very active in saying that they have a good chance against um Manchester City you know they've had their highlights from the past few games and you know they apparently have a good his historical record against them but I think Man City coming off the high of a 3-0 win against uh um Chelsea then I think they'll be too good for them look for you know 2-0 win Yaya Toure don't be surprised if Aguero once again gets on the score sheet I think he's um trying to prove again that he's the best Premier League uh, striker uh, in the modern era. So, yeah, 2-0 to City. Uh, Watford-Southampton, I think Watford um, will get their home win, um, especially, you know, Southampton, like I said earlier, just <clears throat> lacking their structure, um, lacking, um, you know, that backbone with Schneiderlin gone and, uh, you know, the two central defenders not playing the best last week against um, Everton. So, uh, Watford 1-0 home win. You know, good to see them uh, finally get some points, uh, get a win on the board. You know, they did have a 2-2 draw with Everton in the opening week. But, um, you know, it be good to see them win, especially not after scoring last week against West Brom. And then uh, to finish to finish the round, Arsenal-Liverpool, the, uh, the game of the round easily uh, at the Emirates Stadium. I think Arsenal, um, it was a very, um, a very hearty game a very well fought win against Crystal Palace um, last week. You know, it showed a lot of toughness to maintain that two one win, especially when they should have been uh, two player, been a player down rather. Uh, it'll be the first. Um, it'll be sorry, the second game of Alexis Sanchez coming back in. Hopefully, he'll be back into um, into full uh, fitness. I think last week he played about seventy five minutes or so, and you know, obviously coming back from Copper America and having such a long break, um, you know, losing that fitness, but. Uh, look for him to come out and um, try and prove another point against Liverpool. Last time we met, it was a 4-1 win uh, for the Gunners at the Emirates. So, hoping to emulate that sort of result. But um, I think it will be 2-1 to Arsenal with a um, late goal to Giroud. Which is um, actually another controversy, or just not a controversy, but a bit of a debate. Um, just, I'll quickly touch on um, Giroud and Walcott competing for that striker spot. So, uh, Walcott, I think, has um, he secured that new contract. But just being so small... Um, He's just very tough to play against, um, tough for him when he plays against the bigger, bigger center backs. So uh, even when he came on, uh, when he started again in the community shield against Chelsea, um, we found that out very quickly. You know, he got shut down by Matic, shut down by Terry. Um, you know, against those bigger players, then he's got, um, he's not that ideal. You know, Giroud is a much better, you know, he's six foot two. He does have that physical presence and ability to hold the ball up. So, um, you know, it's a bit... Um, 
touch and go with who's going to start. You know, it's always up for debate each week with um, who could start for them. But I think Giroud will get the nod this week, especially after um, that goal, the sublime goal, I must say, for um, <clears throat> uh, for the Gunners against Crystal Palace. So, um, yeah, I think he'll hold, he'll hold on to that starting spot and just, um, yeah, we'll have to see what Walker does. You know, he'll probably come on as a winger like he did last week against Palace. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it'd be good to see Walcott start down the middle. He did, he ended the season really well last year. And uh, that's, um, you know, I think that's a testament to how he is at striker. You know, he can put the ball away when he wants to. So um, that's it for tonight or this week's games. But just looking at a few signings from yesterday, it was breaking news when I did do the podcast before it was lost. Um, but yeah, Nicholas Otamendi signing with Manchester City for £32 million. Another centre-back coming in to strengthen the, the defence for them. Uh, for the city zones, rather. Um, yeah, they've... Um, not that they really need. I think Mangala's been half-decent for them. You know, he's... Um, actually, no, he's been mediocre. He's a very quick centre-back, but um, defensively, he's um, not the greatest. Otamendi is definitely a step in the right direction for them. I think his partnership with... Uh, uh, with uh, Francois Company will be um, great for them. So, uh, 32 million is a bit overpriced, but I've been, I've been hearing rumours that it was um, initially at about 26 28 million so maybe that was it um maybe it was there and then 38 was just an inflated number um i mean 32 million is you know sanchez diego costa territory but i think um for a player like otamendi i think just looking at some statistics he um had 28 uh blocks in the uh, la liga last season for valencia uh so and that led the, led the league uh led the center backs at least um in terms of blocks so i think um you know, a good signing for them is strengthen the squad and you know City are going to want to uh, rotate their players um, as they still try to strengthen their Champions League campaign. I mean, last season they, you know, still struggling to get out of the um, out of the group stage. So I think having that extra centre-back who can um, play the ball and actually um, is actually a first-team quality um, will definitely help. So, and then finally, um, Pedro Rodriguez coming over from Barcelona to Chelsea after much speculation that he was going to United, it's um just taken under his nose taken under their nose sorry so um yeah 21 million for him which i think is an absolute steal for a 28 year old um you know he's um a great winger you know won five la liga titles with uh barcelona three champions league uh, he scored 99 goals across the 300 something goals he played and uh, games he played rather and i mean it's not a uh, crazy amount of goals but i mean when you are playing on the right wing next to Messi and next to, um, you know, while he was there would have been Thierry Henry and Eto and uh, Ibrahimovic, you know, for him to even bang, bang in almost 100 goals, I think is um, quite a uh, quite a feat. So uh, he'll be a good rotation player for Chelsea. I think um, Mourinho will still opt to start uh, Willian on the right-hand side um, with Hazard on the left. Uh, but I think Mourinho last season was accused of um, not uh, rotating his players enough with Champions League, you know, that you could tell they were getting tired, especially Fabregas um, down the middle. Um, you know, they were, you can tell that they were fatigued playing so many games, you know, Capital One Cup, FA Cup, Champions League. Um, it just gets tiring for them. Of course, you know, you play so many minutes over the season. It's just, um, it's just intense. So bringing in another player will definitely help. I think Pedro, um, I think William will, should start and should stay in that starting position until he's, um, proved to not be as effective but um yeah look for once the champions league starts off again um look for pedro to be starting in that starting lineup in that starting lineup so so um that just about does it a uh, longer podcast actually surprisingly about almost 40 minutes um now um so we'll leave it there if you need to um, ask any questions or anything i'll answer them on the podcast just tweet me at sebasian underscore quinn on twitter uh follow on the facebook page it's uh two ball blog i'll put the link in the description of the youtube um youtube video uh, i'm also on soundcloud now so it's tbb podcast and um i'll put the link in the uh in the uh blog post itself on the website um so thank you everyone for listening and i'll see you guys next week bye bye